Bradford in Devon. And this is a lovely month, middle of May, for Devon. All the banks are full of red campion and bluebells and foxgloves beginning to come out. And this is where we've been told to come. And Tommy's truck's here. And a skip and people. Hello. Oh, Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad How are you? Nice well. to see you. Uh, now, you have to introduce yourselves. I'm Heather. Heather. Yeah. So you're Jeff's sister. Bro, yeah. Wife. Wife. <laughs> yes. It's early. Jeff's the guy we're surprised. And he's away. He's in antiques, isn't he? He is. That's right. right. Yes, Heather, you're his wife. You're surprising him. Absolutely. But Marigold. Oh, well, it must be Valerie, she. actually, but um, Marigold, alias Marigold. You see, there's nothing there's a story behind in this life. It's the <laughs> Valerie, yes. uh, you wrote in and said. You I wanted us to. I did. Them. I did. And who's there? And I'm Eric. I'm Valerie's husband. Eric. Right. How did you do? You sure you don't want to be called anything else? <laughs> no, no. Eric will do. The importance of being Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. I have to confess, there's a slight problem here. I normally turn up with a pad, with a drawing in it. Well, the brief video I saw of this garden, I could not make head or tail of. All right. So I've got a couple of ideas of what might happen in it. Don't look so worried. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not quite sure what order they come in. So he's gone away for two days, and we've got two days to do this while he's completely in the dark. Absolutely. Oh, that makes four of us, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> come on, some look. Wow. <laughs> Devon jungle, this. Gosh. Hey, Heather. Yes? Come and talk to me. <laughs> we need to work out precisely what Jeff wants. What sort of garden does he like? Well, he likes a country garden. It's just as well because he's got one. <laughs> <laughs> but manageable country garden. Yeah. It's a bit, you know, we just can't, we don't know where to start. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what the what do you garden. keep and what do you take out? I think I'm going to need a really good wreck here. It's a little overgrown. <laughs> um, There's a happy disorder to this place and a host of lovely plants well worth saving. Not a garden to sweep away and start again, but one to rediscover and freshen up. Oh my there. word! There's a pond in there somewhere. The Montbrich is nice, that kind of wild thing. Oh, but look, if you look that way, look, there's Solomon's seal there out, and the lovely little view. Now, if we clear this big bubbly around here. Yeah. Comes out. Look at this, we can do a wonderful sort of meadow thing here. A meadow that's flowering with ladies' smock and the hint of a view down our two day challenge just waiting to be opened up. So cancel the peace and quiet while Charlie oh, deals with the old conifers that have choked the pond with needles. Right, so if that one goes down. Yeah, I'll drop it onto that. On top of that because we don't want it anyway, that cushion it's full. <laughs> Oh, it's very smelly in here. Mm. While Willie and Charlie re-excavate the pond, I've climbed up onto our high camera position to start my plan. This was a formal pond. And I don't think it really fitted in with the wildlifey area, so uh, I'm going to make it much more wiggly and lo have lots of beaches running in and rocks and logs so that wildlife can get out. That's the plan, anyhow. It's all gone a bit quiet and relaxed. Mr Titchmarsh seems to have disappeared. Mr. Walsh is sunbathing. That's amazing. If I sit down for two minutes, everybody thinks I'm doing nothing. I've got a vague idea of what we're doing. Um, which, from your point of view, probably looks incredibly messy. Um, but the idea is we've cleared away a lot of the top growth now. Um, this is the path that goes up. Here's the tree that we pruned. There's another tree at the top. The, uh, the yucca there. And the idea is to leave lots of long grass up the top there, but to mow this area here 
bench seat at the top which we're going to make out of sleepers and I want to mow lots of little paths or cut little paths throughout this area here. The pond will now be informal in shape, hello dog, and not formal. The gazebo is to be built at that end so you can walk through it from there and round and up the garden. Um, there's a lot to do. Have we decided how we're going to do this then? Where's the gazebo going? Charlie's pond's there. You're standing where the gazebo goes there. Is there a floor to this gazebo or not? There Just is. I thought we might do a bark floor nice. actually inside. No, the it. gazebo doesn't come with a floor. It. No, it doesn't. It's yeah. very rustic, but uh, there's quite a bit of path to make going up to it. So you've got your work cut out, sunshine. Are we going to use, if I relay this, are we going to use this as the floor? Uh, no, not, no, no, not bark, bark inside right. it. Why are you but, listening? Yeah, pay attention, watch my lips. God, they just right. keep moving so much. <laughs> All the ones that were inside it, you can now use for your pavement over there. All right. Oh, it's a good job something keeps moving. To escape unnecessary abuse, I'm off to mow the meadow, allowing existing wildflowers and others I'll plant to seed themselves beyond the mowed pathway. <laughs> meadows like this, people get confused as to when to cut the longer grass and I tend to cut mine at home in about an early August when the things have seeded and the seeds have fallen. That way it falls down among the grass, you're making use of the seed, your colonies grow but when you mow it off, rake it all off, take it off and that's when I cut mine, uh, just once a year in August. Let's take out a little divot. Not too big. Ease it out. Hopefully that's about the size of the root ball of this lovely little ragged robin. Really soggy, which is nice. Slip it in. Firm it. Oh, we had a squelch. <laughs> Firm it with your fingers. Fluff up the grass. Looks as though it's always been there. Very nice. The re-dug pond needs a new liner, laid over carpet under felt to protect it from any sharp stones beneath. This bedding mix is sharp sand, four shovels, soft sand, two shovels, and one shovel of cement. Put some little ripples in like that, slab it, that allows you to tap it down gently. Bingo. Nice firm pass. It's actually warm as well, you know. Oh, that's great. Mm, so it's a change. Oh, well, I'm just doing a bit of cooking actually at the minute. Mm, right. Valerie's helping me. <laughs> okay, my dear. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank See you. you then. Bye. Bye bye. -bye. So you didn't say who you were cooking for? No, I didn't, no. <laughs> so you think it's just you? He thinks it's just me, that's oh. right. And Val and Eric. Little does he know, he has a ravenous film crew to cook for as well. He'll be funding that, he doesn't know. Ha ha, serve him right. <laughs> the idea of these pebbles, if you're not very good at doing this, you're doing it at home, as you're coming around a bend, just leave a gap. So wet lay these and then just fill in the gap with pebbles. Solves a lot of problems. It's quick and it looks very nice. Heather! Yes, Charlie? Could you turn the water on for me, please? OK. Be here forever with it. <laughs> Using stone salvaged from the undergrowth, Tommy and Charlie are giving the pond a natural look and are hiding the liner at the same time. Right. I'm just holding it steady. It's 
nice when things start getting right, isn't it? Yeah, it makes a nice change. <laughs> For once in our street. Tea up, everybody. Tea? When there are infinitives to be split, my tea time mission to boldly mow where none have mown before. Mow it down, docks and whatnot, you end up with this lovely circuitous path. And suddenly you see lovely bits of pine tree. Yeah. Look, pine in flower. Glorious. Carpet forget me nots. And Veronica. Yeah. Queen Anne's lace. Mm. And beach. This is the best time of year for beaches, isn't it? You see the sun through it. It's so soft. Oh, it's unsullied by summer winds. And then lovely view of meadow next door. And some slashing old oak trees. And then you come round and this... Oh, I'm particularly pleased with this. <laughs> because just as you're round the road over here, you get this viewpoint. Look at that down to the house. Isn't that right? Well, if you walk round here, past the focal point of Burdock, Woodham, <laughs> and then the bench seat for sleepers, goes here. And you look right the way down there. Good, eh? Nice. Is that about it? It's quarter six. Um, what do you think of this, then, Eric? I, this is a sort of like, gothic. Yes. Rustic gothic it's gazebo. I could give a survey of here, couldn't yeah, I? Yeah, you more likely will before the day's out. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrigible. Yeah. Day two. Alan's screwing up the gazebo. Charlie's paddling in the pond. And uh, they're leading me up the garden path. Right. Go on. You have to stand and watch. We're getting on quite nicely. Love you, Bob. Go on. No, not there. Higher at your side, Charlie, if you can. Right. Kev, 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 we're all on the branch there. That's it. Right. And try not to step on that plant, plant which has just fallen over. Oh, shut Don't up, Alan. Hold on, let me hold on to that plant. Don't tread on it. <laughs> We're on our own now, are we? Not for Willie. OK. Right, you're right there. You yeah. feel right I'll holding it. I'll prop it, it yes. Whoop. <laughs> and have a look. I can't walk on these, can I, because these are fresh. Do you want it straight on like that? Level them there, It'd be yeah. just nice if it was maybe... What, slightly, you, slightly... Don't you worry, Alan, you just walk through all those plants that I just spent ages standing up, mate. Oh, and you, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wants to be angled a bit, yeah. so the gate, the doorway faces over this way yeah, slightly Willie's. more. I think that's... Yeah, that's yeah, we'll stop there. Yeah, that's great. I think that's good, don't you? Yeah. That marks its position, so Tommy can now build the step up. Pebbles round the pond's perimeter set off the plants and more stones from the bushes make the retaining wall up to the gazebo. Decorated with lettuce. Yeah. Devon cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? 
a new type of planting basket. And is it biodegradable then? It breaks Ultimately. down after yeah. about three or four years. By then, the plant's established enough to stay down the bottom. And the lily is a William Shaw, which is a pink one. Yeah. And the reason I chose it is because it flowers in the shade. Oh, not, brilliant. Not dense shade, but if it's slightly shaded, it still, it still flowers. So good for a woodland glade. Mm hmm And you've got to not cover the crown when you're potting it up. Do you want some pebbles to stop that floating out? It would be very nice. The pebbles prevent the soil from floating away when it's sunk in the deepest part of the pond. Well, where are we going? We'll go this way a bit more. One, two... Are you going to let it drop? I'm going to let it drop. Go on, then. Go! And the leaves are on the surface. Wonderful. There we go. Lovely. Good game. A bit of fancy pointing completes the wall that supports the front of the gazebo. When it's sitting comfortably, it'll be anchored with pegs. <coughs> Let me kick it out of the way. That's, that's the one. Is it going on the edge? On the stone. Very pretty. Don't worry, it's a seat. <laughs> um, it's always best to place your plants and your groups of plants before you start actually putting them into the soil, otherwise you're not digging them up. No, I don't like it there. And what I'm trying to do here is to make a kind of soft yellow, white, sympathetic, but quite bright in the dappled shade area. And the fragrance is really lovely. So does it go on exactly here with the slivers now? No, I think across there more. Well, I check with his nibs before we level it. It's better there. Alan? Yeah? The seat's going right here, isn't it? Right back up against those buttercups. Right up? Yep. That's it. And just lower away into the hole. That's it. Because the thing about rhododendrons and azaleas, you never plant them too deeply. Victorians made the mistake of planting a lot of rhododendrons and azaleas too deep and never really established properly. But if you've got them just a bit above the soil with the top of the root ball just on the edge of it, then that's what they like. So that's mm. what we do. I'll check my ones when I get home. Take the price tag off. Do you know how much? Break your heart. It's quite old, quite established. £89.99p. How but much? Look, 89 quid. Oh dear. Well, it's probably not quite as old as you are. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're wicked, you are. <laughs> no, but it's nice actually. It's been growing in the pot for too long. It's great to give it a new lease of life. And all these young shoots down here, look, they'll start growing away now. It's got a bit of decent earth around it. Grow well, little azalea. Oh, oh it gets heavier each time. Oh, what now? All right, nice nice. Right, hi. Good and steady. <laughs> but he'd like to join us up here, wouldn't he? Mm, leave him planting. You got any black timber preservative? I knew that was coming. I just knew that. We would just like to paint those cut surfaces. Yeah. Same every time, yeah. isn't it? There he is, stuck is in his face. <laughs> so as we enter the final furlong, the scaffold has arrived to disappear the camera platform. Right, head to the grass box and we just have a quick whiz around the end with a pair of shears and a bucket. One thing first, you've got to bring the chair up to the gazebo yeah. and I've got to put up that um, box, that gin and tonic tray where you want it. <laughs> oh, if only. Right, it goes in at an angle there. Soon, apart from a few changes to the garden, there'll be nothing to show that ground force has even been here. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. 
good. Hey, David. Hi. Hello, my dear. <laughs> Jeff, yes. we've got a wee bit of a surprise for you. You yeah. know you're always surprising me. Yes. Right. Yes, yes. Just come round with us, please. Well, we've got some ladies and gentlemen here. I've seen this guy before. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hair's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! Hey! <laughs> Right, Jeff, I think you better walk up here with yes. me. <laughs> and Heather. That's fantastic. Good lord. Complete with gazebo. That is fantastic. You've done right. a great job. <laughs> a great <laughs> job. The only thing we ask you is that not to climb up the step into your gazebo until tomorrow because it's still setting. <laughs> But after tomorrow, Jeff can sit enthroned in his gazebo and perhaps glimpse a reflection of yours truly in his new garden. The old pond is reborn, surrounded by sympathetic planting, wildlife-friendly beaches and reclaimed paving. Beyond the garden's new focus, a secret walk from where the views are pure chocolate box. Perfection. <laughs> Heather, Valerie, come and get one of these, yeah. and Eric, you need one. Where, where are you, Willie? Well, thank there you very you much, and very good health to all. <laughs> thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank Cheers. Oh. Ooh. Hey. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. From the Ground Force team in glorious Devon in what was a wilderness with almost two titch marshes. Almost. <laughs> Could be my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Bye bye! Cheers. <laughs> You're cruel. <laughs> <laughs> Ask you a question. Yes. Do people think you dye your hair as well? Yes. Well, no, and you don't, do you? No. Neither do I. No. Survey. <laughs> <laughs>